joining us Wait. live and now good Wednesday evening to everyone's joining us live. And for those of you that are not joining us live, we'd love it if you dropped in on, on to see us live Wednesday night at nine o'clock Eastern time. Katie and I are both live just about every Wednesday night and love to see you hop on. We've got a big group of people saying hello from Marcus to Joe, Kevin to, and they just disappeared. So everyone that is saying hello, top of the evening to you. Uh, tonight we've got a fun uh, um, fly in store for you. But first, I wanted to tell a quick story. Um, John Christopher, our 11-year-old, was uh, fishing with us the other day. And, and for Christmas last year, he got a seven and a half foot four weight moonlit fly fishing rod. It's a whole moonlit setup. It's perfect. Hey, Sam. Um, and, uh, and it's perfect for him. It's a little shorter, but then again, when you're 11, having a nine foot rod can be kind of hard to, uh, to maintain. And, um, did you fly? Sorry. I'm trying to keep up the comments too, but I'm just going to tell my story. Um, so, He's done really good fishing in the Great Smoky Mountains, fishing for wild trout, fishing for native brooks, fishing for uh, stock trout, and and just catching catching a lot of fish with that rod. When we went and fished uh, somewhere two weekends ago that had big trout, and it was in the river, and he hooked into about a 20-inch or so rainbow trout. We posted a picture of it, and uh, he ended up catching two or three of them. But the first one... As he had his hand up like this, as hard as high as he could go, and that four weight was doubled over and bent down, and his eight foot leader ish was going all the way to the fish, and he was reaching out as far as he could go to get to the fish. We realized that he couldn't land a larger fish because that rod was bent over too much. So, if he's going to fish for bigger fish, he's going to need a longer rod. And thankfully, Katie and I have plenty for him to use, but when you're fishing with the little ones, if they um, catch a big fish, you might need to give them a hand. So on those bigger ones, he'd get it in and get it right to where he was ready to net. And he'd hand me the rod and I'd just do the last foot. And he'd net it and do everything with it. So a lot of fun with him. So I'm going to get caught up on the comments. I'm going to turn it over to Katie, who is going to show the pictures that were submitted last week. And thank you so much to everyone that, um, that sent in pictures. We really appreciate it. Well, we do, and I hope everybody can hear. It's okay tonight. Um, I tried to do some work on the audio to make sure that we were coming through. Loud and clear, just like that. So um, first, let's share some of the pictures that we got this week of the um, mini leeches from last week that we tied. Thanks so much for sharing those with us, everybody. Um, let's get started. So... There we go. You guys see that? Okay. Awesome. No. So this was actually a reel that I took a screenshot of. Um, and this is full X72. I think that's still on you right now. It's still on the preview. Oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Um, that is not Ray Stevens. <laughs> You're right. Bull X72. Bull X72. There you go. There we go. Billy Bugs flies. Oh, Bill Brashears, he always submits proof. He stole our purple bead that I didn't have. Chasing feathers. Mark. Mark's up this evening. Is not able to join us live tonight. Dave Hall. And then we got another one from Dave, too. That is pretty cool because it's in the fish's mouth, which is where you want it to be. Jimmy Roop. And Jay Wilson, 14260. Ken Brooks, Ken, if you're on here with us tonight, looking good. He had a few modifications with his materials. He used what he had, but they still look pretty darn good. Sodak fly fish, very pretty red. And stonefly one. Thank you, stonefly one. Good choice. Purple doesn't ever work, but I, I like your, you know, I applaud your effort. <laughs> so that's it. But thanks for sharing with everybody this week, guys. I really appreciate it. All right. So how do people get uh, their pictures to you to share, Katie? 
Well, basically, you can post them on Instagram and tag us on the photo. In the photo, not the comment, in the photo. Right. Um, or you can send us an email at demuthflyfishing at gmail.com. Cool. And you can just email it to us and send us a note, and I'll write you a quick note back. Awesome. Thanks, Katie. Mm -hmm. Um, and Kevin asked if we were on the South Holson. We weren't. I've been on South Holson a few times in the past month, but we were down um, in Gatlinburg. And um, this weekend I was in Virginia fishing and had an absolutely phenomenal trip. Um, I was the only one within miles. It was so wonderful. So anyway, let me go ahead and push go on the old Instagram because we're going to talk about tying a fly. Today, we're going to tie the, oh my gosh, I brain, what? Um, Magnus. Uh, the Magnus. There you go. We're going, to try, we're going to tie the Magnus. And Katie and I are very fortunate. Um, we, uh, we hung out with Barry Ord Clark in New Jersey about four years ago, five years ago. And uh, then we hung out with him again at a fly fishing show in Italy. And he had invited us to come fishing with him. And, and uh, about a month ago, we decided that we would take him up on the offer and go to Norway. And we're going to stop. And um, Steve, I, I, I have no doubt that Magnus is your middle name. It's mine um, too. <laughs> um, we're going to stop in Manchester. And uh, visit North England, see our friends over at Semper Fly on the way. But I asked Barry, what are some flies that I should tie to fish for sea run brown trout? And he said, um, he gave me a list of five. And this is a really good introductory fly. This is a very, material-wise, a very simple fly. Because uh, it only has... Um, Feathers, some dubbing, and some either wire or cord. Um, that's the only materials there are on it. Um, and, and it has a lot of the same attributes as far as tying. This is it right here. I'll zoom in for our Instagram people so we can get this done. Um, this is the Magnus. So I've read where it can imitate a shrimp, imitate a bait fish. This was invented, I believe, in 1978. And it's just like a grayish, tannish, bait fishy, foody, moving looking fly. And um, and this is it. So we're going to tie a few of these up just for the fun of it. And I have also um, uh, read that this fly is very similar to the Clouser in that it has caught tarpon, smallmouth, um, perch, trout. Gosh, everything. See, Ken, thank you so much uh, for hopping on before work in Australia. Um, yep, Freddie, work in the lake here. I think it'd be fun to, to grab a pattern that is popular over in Norway, Sweden, and Denmark, and then start posting some pictures of, of a, um, a, a American fish with it, with it in its mouth. So anyway, this is what we're going to tie. So the fly, I'll go over the materials because it's so easy. I'm going to use the SA220, the A-Rex SA220 in a size, we'll figure out the way, maybe. What have I not, there it is, size eight and a size six. And I'm pretty much going by Barry's pattern, uh, not Barry's pattern, but Barry's instruction. You can see on his YouTube channel how he ties it. Uh, I'm going to use large bead, cha bead chain eyes in silver. These are... I can't get the thing, but trust me, the large bead chain and bead chain eyes. I have a freshwater streamer. Hey, do you want to go to the side here? Because this sure. is kind of hard for me to. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Freshwater streamer cape here. And this is just in grizzly. Um, just about any grizzly cape. Just think about think about tying a woolly bugger and you'll be fine. Um, that's that'll work. And um you can either use wire, 0.3 millimeter wire, or the oval tinsel. So I'll, I'll use both this evening. I like, personally I like the wire a little bit better. So either heavy gauge wire or the oval tinsel. I'm going to use uh, ADOT. Pretty sure it's ADOT. Six hot, excuse me, six, six hot Semperfly Nano Silk and some hair's ear dubbing. So pretty simple. What's up, Joe? Yep, probably will work. I think I read stripers were were good 
on it as well. Thanks for hopping on, Joe, and and saying something. <laughs> Twelve paper handles in the flabber ball, yeah. Similar. It it is it is similar. Um, it's a little smaller, I believe. Um, now, but uh, it is very similar to the, the American Cape for sure. If you've got the American Cape, you don't need a freshwater streamer cape. Kind of, and the same thing in reverse. If you got a freshwater streamer, you don't need American. Um, okay, so we'll get to tying this one real quick. And this does, because it's got the B-chain eyes on it, it is going to ride hook point up, or it's supposed to ride hook point up. You can see it's not a very not a very big fly, just kind of um, it's a perfect size to bounce on the bottom or to, to swim. So we'll start off with the size six. And if you got any questions, now, now I'm kind of, I need to ask, how do you open up a pack of hooks that doesn't open? Because that one's a knot. There we go. Sorry about the rattling. I should have had those sitting out. So, and if you notice, I'm using my mids jaws to tie this. Probably not the smartest thing in the world, but we're uh, rain bait size. Yep. Um, but we're going to make it work anyway. All right, so one of the, the tricks, one of the, um, I don't want to say drawbacks, but one of the just the facts about nanosilk is it is very slick. Um, it's a very, very slick thread. So when you're putting it on hooks, it is very slippery. And when you're tying bead chain eyes, it's very, very slippery. So having a good base is important. So I want to use this. Um, this is a special wax, but it is designed for um, nanosilk. It is designed for GSP threads. It is not like a... For the good or bad, I've got, well, I just grabbed one because I've got two waxes here and I've probably got um, at least eight things of different kinds of waxes on that I can reach. Um, and they all have their own little purpose, just like this wax. This is not going to cake up. It's not going to take up. It's not going to get gooey or anything. It's hard. Um, but the way I put it on is I just get my, get the thread, put my finger on top and pull the thread through. And do that a couple times, and they'll kind of make it uh, black. Uh, yeah, the cobbler's wax will, will work um, okay. It's just going to be a little bit heavier, a little bit thicker. And when you go to, um, I think this is cobbler's wax here. It'll look the same. Um, so you can see as I as I put that on, see how it, you got a little black mark there. That's fine. Um, but see, when I wrap this, I'm going to start right where I want the bead chain eyes to start. So you see when I wrap this, how it's not slipping and it, it made it black. So this is going to have a lot more grip right here than, than without the wax. And you can see there's not like a big um, buildup of wax there. Um, and <laughs> Or you could get a piece of wax from behind your ear, see? Um, all right, so we're going to do this just like, uh, just like Barry did. So we're going to get our cape out here. I'm going to get two feathers and these are going to be for the, the tails, the feelers, the, whatever you want to call them. And I get them from more towards the, the top of the neck. And what I'm looking for is just two that are real close together. Cause if I get two that are close together, you'll see what I mean here in just a second. Pull those two out. Now, See how that if you look here, they've their coloration is very similar, the size is identical. They'll go really nicely when I when I pair them up and match them up just like that, except for that one's bent. But <coughs> bless you, Bubba, bless you. I forgot to say we're gonna do a giveaway later on at 9:45, right, Katie? Mm -hmm. So stay tuned for a little giveaway. Shrek Steve. Joe said, bless you. <laughs> All right, so me. we're going to stick this, this, uh, we're going to measure this out. And I want it to be rough, a little bit longer than the hook shank. So I just have it, have the tip right. We switch over to the hook. Um, I have the, the tip where it goes to the hook shank. And then I just kind of look on the, find a piece that's going to go right to the end of the hook eye. And that gives me a little bit longer. So rough, roughly there, I measure it and I pinch. Okay. So now my thread is not at the very, very back, but I can put a loose wrap. Another loose wrap. Look at it. Make sure I'm kind of where I want it. And then now I can bring my thread all the way to the back where, where I want it. And it shouldn't spin too much or spin at all, although it did just now. 
and I'm just trying to work it back down. Let's do that again. I swear I've tied a few of these and haven't had one spin. <clears throat> back that up just a bit. Do the same thing. Pinch it. Hey, Mark. Hey, Truman. Glad you guys could jump on tonight. Is Mark on? Yeah. yeah he's going to be able to make it. All right. So we'll call that fine. It's not perfectly straight, but it'll be good. I think it's where it had that kink in it. So this one, we're just going to bring kind of the same thing. Make sure they are the um, same length. They are. Do one loose wrap, tight wrap. Make sure it's right where I want it. See, that one's not kinking at all or not doing anything. Bring it back to the hook bend. Just like that. All right, so now we're going to bring everything back up. Hey, if you're just jumping on and joining us, thanks for joining us tonight. We are tying the Magnus fly as a possible fly for catching sea trout. Is that right? Sea trout? Sea run brown trout in Norway. Not because we're just thinking about it, but because that's where we'll be fishing here in a little here in a couple months. Okay, so I should have gotten a different feather because that back one was twisted as heck. All right, but we're gonna make it work. Or should I redo it, honey? Tell me now. Um, no. No. You need to to keep carry going. through. Keep going. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna put some bead chain eyes on. Um, what's up, Josh and Ryan, Mike and Al, Al, thank you for uh, the welcoming committee, YouTube, Mike. So to put these um, the bead chain eyes on, I'm just going to hold it right. I'm just going to set them right here, put a wrap on. You see how they're crooked? That's totally fine. So they're crooked going this way. I'm going to put, oh, we'll say eight. So I've got one there, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is important when you're putting dumbbell, bead chain, whatever eyes on. This is just the way I do it. Do it however you like. So now we're crooked. I'm going to take my thread and bring it over. I'm going to do eight going this way. And if I pull tight, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I look at it. See that straight? Now I'm going to go around and do, oh, what are these called? Horse collars. I don't know. Something. But pull this really tight. And th these right here are what's going to make it not want to, to spin. So we've got one set. I'm going to go around it. We'll say 10 times. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I think I missed that first one. So there's one more. 2, 3, 4. Pull it. 2, 3, 4. And see, this, this is not going to go anywhere. But if I don't put all these wraps on it, it'll spin. It can like move around easily on the hook shank. And I'm not a big fan of throwing super glue on them because once the super glue breaks free, then, um, then it, it's just going to spin. That's just, that's just how it is. So I'd rather the, the strength come from my thread wraps. So let's look at it make sure that's straight. And we're nice and made a little bit of tweaking. And one of the common misconceptions on dumbbell eyes, B chain eyes, however you want, whatever you're using, is um, no matter how they're they're put in, I can grab them and put enough force on them, and they will spin around. Like if you grab grab them, and they will eventually move. So you're not going to get it to where it's just concreted on there. Um, you'll get really close though. And this is that darn um, nano silk. So if I, I definitely, if I caught it on something, I could break it, but I would bend the hook if I just pulled it straight and before anything else really happened. So I've got a piece of this um, 0 0.03 or 0.3 millimeter silver wire right here in the vise. I've got it sitting right beside me. So I'm going to tie that in first. All right, put my thread back to about there. Now let's let's uh, go to the side again because I've got to find my dubbing. All right, so I've got my dubbing here. I've got a nice little little hole. See, I've got that corner cut, 
And I would probably, I don't know if I do a dubbing loop or a split thread. Barry uses split thread, so that's what we're going to do. Then put head cement to penetrate wraps. What, what was the first step, Steve? Because when I when I finish the fly, I'm gonna, I'm gonna really soak some head cement in here. That that will that'll help. But um, this is hard looking down at, at a blight. I'm trying to fly. okay. So I got my. You can see I got that split. Just split thread. Grab this with. So I've got my thread and my dubbing in my hand here. Got this. I'm gonna pull out smaller pinches, but this is gonna be pretty loaded up. Smaller pinches first, and if you get too small, you can kind of cram it up against the last pinch. Get too big and kind of spread it out. And see, I'm just kind of you see see how that's working. I don't know if the, I don't know which angle is gonna be better to look at. Okay. Does that dubbing just automatically just stay so nicely like that? So if, can you switch to the side? Maybe it'll. Um, so when, if you see when I pull this out, the, the fibers are somewhat aligned and I put them up in there, I'm just putting it right in the, of course, now that you're kind of like weaving it on, I'm not weaving it or anything. I'm just, I've got it split it, okay. and I'm just laying it in between the pieces of thread, just like that. We'll do one. Whoa. See, that's way too big. That's a big old chunk there. Getting a little overzealous on us. Pinch it, pull a finger out. And see how we got that there. What happened to that big chunk? Of, someone tell me where that chunk of dubbing went. Someone put that back in. It's on your thing. On, on your thinking. finger. On your thread. Oh, thank you. That thing. On the thing. All right. So we've got that that loaded up. I'm going to put this back in here because waste not, want not. Believe it or not, I've got one bag of this and that's it. Um. So now I'm going to just spin this up and just give it a light spin because once I just give it a light spin, I can slide the material around and kind of manipulate it just a bit without it falling out so much. So that, that looks okay. I want it to be a little bit thinner in the front and thicker in the back. So I'm not trying to make the loop longer. And there's a one chunk right there that I don't care if I don't pull it out. And so that, that looks pretty good. See how it's kind of thinner here and thicker up here. That's what I'm going for. Thang. Oh, well. All right, so now we're going to grab this. Take my finger, slide forward like that. And I've got my, my loop here, so we should be able to bring it all the way back. Maybe put it back on the the hook just now, please. There we go. So we've got the the dubbing starting right where the that that hackle tip's coming out. Make sure I got a good coverage. And I'm not other than stroking back every now and then like this. I'm not trying to really keep this super duper neat. Oh, see, Al just said there was a pop up commercial. Really? Yeah. During the stream. No way. Well, that, no. That, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Indeed. No, sorry. I try. Okay. I I need to um make that be set so that it doesn't do that, right? We or do you have to? to? I don't know. We might have to. I don't know. So I just kind of blew that up. But Al, thank you for telling. Or uh, Steve, thank you for telling. Yes, us thanks that. for telling us that, so, so that I can know, know what. Stuff. Yeah. And to all of you all, because there are quite a few now that have bought badges, or not badges, but have bought memberships, either, whether it's the promoter or the supporter, Kate and I both really appreciate it. It's not like if we don't get the $3 that we're not going to ever go live again, but it really um, helps and it really shows that you all it's fun. Value this. Yeah. And, it um, makes us be like, okay, we're not the only ones who like to just, just yeah. like to do this every Wednesday. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's just Katie. Look at mine. Oh, yeah. Okay. So on John's um, external monitor, he just had a really quick Wendy's commercial. Wendy's. By the way, tomorrow is leap is uh, the 29th. Did you guys hear that? Tomorrow is February 29th. Mm -hmm. So it's a very special day. And also, if you like Cineparts. Cineparts? Um, 
if you like, I saw this on the news today. If you like Cinnabon pull aparts, okay. I think that's what they're called. You can get them tomorrow during breakfast hours at Wendy's for free. Why don't you put it on you so they can see you as you're talking about Cinnabon? <laughs> sure. I saw on the news today that on February 29th, tomorrow, if you go to Wendy's during the breakfast hours, you can get Cinnabon pull aparts for free. I think Kevin said that this is that's his anniversary. Ooh, I that's fun. That's what cool. So, right. but you only celebrate it once every, once four, every years. Four, four years or so. Okay, so we've got no, I think that's worldwide or well, US, United States. Okay, so I pulled a, another feather off from about the middle of this cape. It is a bigger feather, as you can see. I'm going to get it right from where. Um, let's go to the side again. Sorry. So you can see right here. There we go. So you can see that here's here's the entire feather. I don't want this part that's that's short fluff here. So let's just cut that off just so we can get rid of that. So you can see what I've got left here. And I'm going to, I'm looking really at the fiber length. And I'm going to cut this a little more off. And I'm going to preen off just a bit. So now what I've got left is a little bit of marabouy part. We've got some a little bit bare stem. I don't want much, but I've got a little bit of marabouy. And then I've got these long fibers because this is going to be the front of the fly. And I've got these long flat fibers. They'll be palmered all the way back. So you can see that feather and how I've, how I've prepped it. You don't have to go and cut it off here. You can, you can use all this stuff here because this is going to give a lot of nice action to the fly. So the way I'm going to tie this in is I'm just going to get the, get the tip just like that. See the, see the tip right there. All right, let's, um, let's go back to the fly. So I've got my tip here that you, that you just saw prep. I'm going to set it right here at an angle. I'm going to do one wrap right over it. Okay. I'm going to take my thread and go in front of that tip and then behind the stem it's set behind the whole feather. So now I've, I've put an X around that and I like putting two more wraps in here and I'll pull really tight because that's going to slip and it's going to capture that in. Now I'm just kind of wrapping over that put in. So now it's pretty well locked in. Okay. See how I did that. I will pull this back. I'm going to put two wraps in the very front, just like we do with stimulators on the that front hackle or that rear hackle, just like we do with um, woolly buggers. So that's two wraps. Now let's do it. Let's do it the, the really easy way. If you guys have learned this and we lost our Instagram thing, I guess they found out we we're live on YouTube at the same time that turned it off. So if you all learn to do, if you've got a rotary vice anyway, if you learn to do this, let's make it really, really, really easy. Hold that tip, hold it at an angle, and go back, back, go around the hook point, around the hook point, stop it there. Now I'm going to get my wire. See how we've done that so far? Let's get our brush to kind of separate everything. See anything that's stuck together? No, not really. Get our wire. We'll lock that in. I'm going to do the exact same thing, but going forward. So if I keep it still, everything's the same. Okay. I'm going to keep going, bring my thread around in front of this bead chain. So that's going to kind of push any fibers back. There's one, two, Three, just for the fun of it, let's pull our, our um, wire all the way to the front. Two, three. Now we'll pull tight. Cut that off. Now we're pretty much done other than coloring up our head. Trim this off. And if you want less hackle, just do le less wraps. If you want more hackle, do more wraps. So this is a very durable fly this one have a lot of nice movement in the water other than my bent hackle tip and when i'm coloring the 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 head i like just taking my sharp this is just a red sharpie is all this is 
it's probably a little bit on the dry side. I might have to splurge and buy a new red Sharpie. Just kind of set this the tip on there. Oh, let's get rid of this, sorry. So the tip right here, and it'll just kind of bleed in. And I'm going to take my thread, color it, because that's going to hopefully start filling in the cracks. So we're just going to do the same thing, just like we're, when we're tying it in. And I'm not really trying to do much other than just get that color all the way everywhere on this head. And do this a few times. That's crazy. The strength. Yep. And and you can change the the point of this was not to be a super flat flashy fly. There is a polar magnus that has is tied with ice dumb. And as you can guess, when you look at like really how this fly is made and like what makes it unique, it, it's not. Nowadays, there's plenty of other flies that are very similar to it. Um, so, I mean, if you get creative, next thing you know, you'll be tying, uh, officially tying a different fly. But this is kind of a good uh, basis for um, for you to get going on. So we'll, um, there we go. Cut that off and now like just making sure everything's kind of pulled back. So see how it looks nice and and this is gonna be really good and flowy there. Um so I take head cement. You guys know what kind. And I'm gonna just put a big glob right there, see how it looks. And then I put some on the underside. Like that and um, I let that dry just like that and when it's done most of that will be gone and I put a second coat on it because saltwater flies they get eaten up dragging I don't know how it is in Norway but dry but in South Carolina dragging through sand and everything the bottom of those, those eyes get beat beat up pretty bad so I like putting a couple coats on there so we'll get started with another one and uh, this time we'll do a size eight do a little bit smaller that's right, Marcus. Sally's. Oh, and is Joe Jackson on here? Sally's Pro Staff. That's right. I put it on by the gallons, dog. We're just all over the place with Sally's. We need to read. Actually, my mom's name's Sally, so I guess that I'm representing for her. Sally for life, homie. My mom's name is Sally, too. My mother-in-law. Oh yeah, <laughs> I'm not saying what you joshing me, girl. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just I'm still awake over here. Oh, honey, well you're going to be doing a giveaway here in a few minutes, and uh, we're doing a drawing. Have you have you worked? Out, I know you've been. I need to work out what commercials play because we've had some people say that there's like some Russian wife commercials. I don't know about that. Like I don't. I didn't pick the commercials. Yeah, you did. <laughs> yeah yeah okay I did. all right so uh yeah we're gonna have a giveaway in about seven minutes about seven minutes so we're gonna show really how easy this fly is because that means that we have 20 minutes we started late but we've got 20 ish minutes before we're, we should be done i was gonna tie three but i might just tie two um, middle Steve's middle name is is it's Magnus Sally. Sally. Minus two. Well, his his middle name is also Magnus. So, Minus two. You know. All right, we've got the thread waxed, and the this this wax is great for nano silk. If you don't use nano silk or you don't use GSP, I wouldn't bother with it. Um, it is really hard, and it works. Like I said it works great for what it's kind of designed for, but. All right, so as you can see now, I am grabbing a couple hackle tips, trying to make sure they're somewhat similar in size. And this time we'll try not to get a bent one or try not to bend one so I'm pulling it out. Maybe that's the problem. Five. Oh, yeah, I know. Somebody saw an Orvis ad at the start. Oh, well, that's cool. Walt Bob is going to be at Little River on Saturday. Well, we're going to be down 
that way, but we're going. I'm going to be going from there to. You won't be able to be there on Saturday. Uh, I'm going to be going to where in South Carolina? I don't know. I've no never heard of it. Some. Uh, Bald, it, Maldine, South it's Carolina. Claire goes, is it at the beach? You're like, do you want to go, Claire? She was like, is it at the beach? You're like, uh, no. Well, it, the good thing is, honey, is no, it's not at the beach, but she doesn't stay for the perform for the uh, award. So we can leave probably like four, five, maybe five. Well, good. You guys can make it for the game at seven at the high school. Ooh. Y'all just love how you can just hear what's going on in the DeMuth household. Yeah, we're away. trying to plan our weekend. We're multitasking. You know, do a YouTube show, plan our weekend. That's right. Okay, this, this be one boring. Looks, this one looks a lot better. Maggie Valley, Ghost Town in the Sky. Remember those guys? <laughs> <laughs> I did meet. Uh, we were at a at Claire's basketball game last night. We met um, a guy named Wes. Came up. Oh, he might be on right now. And he, and he, it's, um, gosh, I wish I could remember his darn screen name. So this is kind of more how they're supposed to look. Two side by side, about yay long. They're not long, long, long tails. I was going to say it looks similar. Uh, I can't remember what mustache he ties them on, but they're, it's a heavy, it's just a heavy streamer hook. Um, Mark, you need to, if some of your plans don't change, um, let us know if we can. We'll get together. Maldine, South Carolina. That's right, Trevor. Is that it? Is that where you're going? I think I thought there's an I in M A L I D E N or something like that. But Maldine, I said Maldine, South Carolina. Bang um, Skippy, right? Well, that'll be fun. It will be fun, especially if Truman comes and says hello to us. That will be fun. Before you know it, Claire would be like, oh, Truman's going to be there. I'll, I'll go. Well, yeah. I mean, you need a good selling point like Truman or the beach. Mal right. Maldine just wasn't cutting it. I want to show this again because this is this is uh, a good trick. One lash in for the beads are crooked. I'm gonna do how many do you last time? Eight. So there's one R on there. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Now we're gonna switch sides, and with each pull, I'm using my fingers and straightening it. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See it straight. Um, so now I've got two sets of wraps that are tight. I'm going to go around them, under the beads, over the hook shank, under the bead, over the hook shank. A few times, grab a shank, pull tight. And I'll just do this. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And for those of y'all that have watched me for... Oh, like a lot of y'all have for years. I, I probably went a whole year at least and tied nothing but 12 lot nano silk. I tied all the flies that were tying with nano silk. And I mean, it's, it's, it, you learn a lot of bad habits with it because there's, I won't say bad habits, maybe that's not right, but it's almost like cheating. Five, six, seven, eight. Um, It does have a lot of advantages because you can't, I don't say can't, but it's really hard to break. It splits super easy. Um, the the biggest disadvantage is it's it's so slick. And that's why you can see I've got a little bit of um, goody on there, a little bit of wax on there. C7S70, yes, that sounds correct. Just got an ad for Granger Tools. How are you getting Russian wives? <laughs> mm -hmm. I think it's, I don't know. I and don't it, think that's true. Um, so you see, I got my, this This time I'm using the French oval tencel. Oval teen. I'm going to use the oval teen, honey. Okay. Uh, and the reason I'm doing your side of the hook shank, this is another little important little tip, is that first wrap, sure, it's right there, perfect. That first wrap is going, this is for all flies, for the, and this is my personal opinion, which is not worth much. Even on, on like, this is a pretty soft tackle. If you win the drawing, I'll throw this one in there, too. A little partial soft tackle. But you've got your tail right here. See the tail? Sorry. See the tail? Same way with this. I want my first wrap to go underneath the tail and over like this. 
And if I'm wrapping the, the other way, I'm going to tie on my side. So it goes underneath the tail and over this. If I'm, if my first wrap and I'm tied here, goes over like that, you can see how it's going to hit the, the, the tail more so. So that's why I'm doing it that way. Uh, if they can make it nano silk be wax, it'd be easier to hold on to. And that's why I'm throwing wax on it. But yeah. I was like, Bill Maldine, South Carolina. There, thank you, Katie. Is that where you're talking about, Truman? Oh, son of a gun. Y'all about saw me stab myself with my bodkin. So we're gonna do the same thing. Split this. You want to switch over to the side, honey. Or whatever um you looks the best so i got the split and that is really hard and then kind of manhandle the nano silk quite a bit more it's a little harder to do with regular thread get this kind of massage that out so i've got some i don't want to massage and force it so slide it up slide it up See if I can read a comment while I'm doing this. Steve, you better be on your best behavior. Uh, I have the puck at worst good. Need the black hockey. Black hockey puck wax for nano so yeah. So so Dan, did you get some of this? Obviously, you know what I'm she's like, yep, you told me to get it. I got it, and it works good. All right, almost there. Get a couple bigger chunks here for the end. How are we doing time, honey? Are we ready for the... Uh, yeah, we're ready. Okay, let's do the drawing. Yeah, so go ahead and pick a number between 1 and 199. Yeah, 1 and 199. And set your alarm. Yep. To three minutes? Yep. Cool. All right, so we got that that down. You can see it's a little bit thicker up here. I would like a little thinner down here, but that's okay. Oh, man, 336. 36. Thanks, man. Oh, you can't pick twice, man. You get your first pick, and that's it. <laughs> oh, that John guy, he is hilarious, isn't he? So we'll spin around a little more. See, every time I spin it, now I'm not trying to brush this out. I'm not trying to get a nice, thin, super tight cord. Um, I'm trying to make it nice and Hey, Ludrig. But I am trying to, um, I am trying to keep it even. So we got smaller than thicker. And that looks good. So we'll take our thumbnail, slide it up. It lasts a little bit of twist in there. Oh, boy, honey. Oh, so you're pulling out your. Yeah, I willed it. I don't think it made a bit of difference. Maybe if we sweet talk lid rig, he might be able to give us a pad or two to donate to uh, to give away. Because these these pads right here, I can pull it up. See, it's giving me a thing on. See that? That is, I, I, I really like having it here. It's usually messy and got junk all over it, but I like having it here. So when I want to stage hooks, as you can see here, or I've got, hooks that I don't know what to do with. I just stick them there and I don't have to worry about them falling or going anywhere. Pretty cool. I like them. All right. So let's switch back to the hook. Just got an ad for span in Spanish. Well, we'll, have, we'll see if we can make those go away. I don't know if we can or not. Jeffrey. And everyone, I know everyone's worried about Jeff and the fires. Just so you know, he's 30 like, seconds he's, he's left to pick a number between one and one ninety nine. He's a couple miles from the fires in Texas, so he is good so far. We switch over to the vice. I'll just get this wrapped on. Then you can do then do the giveaway of the drawing. Here we go. So I'm just kind of watching this. Making sure it's a little bit bigger towards the front. And that's good right there. Pull all this back if I can. And I'm just going to take my Charlie Craven brush. Charlie said, not for teeth. Just kind of rough it up a little bit. And then we'll be ready for our hackle after the drawing. Perfect timing. Look at that. 
head you can change based on your own language. GPS. Oh gosh, GPS. Tally, thank you for the uh, the advice on the ads. We're trying to see if we can figure out how to maybe maybe turn them off while we're live. I'm just pads the timetable. Lidrig has got it going on. I thought someone said Lidrig was on. Scott was on here. He was. He was. I figured he would have said something. Well, if you know Scott Lidrig, send him a note, and we'll see if we can get some of those to uh, see if we can order some to give away. Katie, all right, let's switch it over to you and your wonderful Wheel of Fortune. Hey, that's the show, isn't it? Wheel of Fortune. So we're going to spin the wheel, and here we go. So the first number is one. Okay, but get, now give it like a half a spin or turn it around a little bit. So, because I think you mean last time it went to the same area. So the first number is one. And the second number is five. Okay. Okay. One, five. And the third number is four. One, five, four. Okay. Yeah. So we'll figure out who is the closest. One, five, um, four. Let's see. Um, we have a one, four, three. Full X. 72. Bull, okay, so that's, that's Marcus, I believe. Yeah. I think that, no, it's not Marcus. Bull we X. have a 157. Okay. Ben Klotzer. I think that, I think Ben, that is. Yeah, um, I think Ben. Bear, think, isn't that Beargrass Leather? Yeah, I think Ben's the winner. Okay. Ben. You win. <laughs> awesome. Ben. Good job, Kevin. Keep up with that. And someone asked something. I'm looking at the comments now and I cannot see. Oh, um, so bead chain compared to um, regular dumbbell eyes. There's, I don't want to say there's no such thing as regular dumbbell eyes, but bead chain are pretty, pretty standard. You've got small, medium, large. You might have extra small, but you've got just the size. We oiled it. We oiled. I did oil it. You, did, you, did all, you oiled it? Yes. You oiled it right up? Lubed it? I did. It just, wow. Just it's, need a little lube up in there? I need Truman to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I do. The engineering um, isn't proper, and he needs to check it out. When yeah. we, it's not. I, it's, bag coffee soon for it. I know he can fix it. Well, um, that's that's not very good. Ben Klotzer, who's where is Ben? Hey, I don't know, but Ben. Congratulations! Know that is. congratulations I'm picking the, a good number, and if you would like to have the flies tied tonight, well, we might do a, a different selection of flies because these are kind of okay. Know, a but, selection of an assortment of flies. It, do we have something else that we were going to throw in there? No, because we I was going to do this dry fly pass. We're going to wait till we do a dry fly. Okay. So just flies. Um, some flies. And, um, so Ben, email us your address or send us a note on, on Instagram. Uh, it's the at gmail.com. I, gmail I don't know who that is. So that is super exciting. I'm glad that you yes, won. Email us and or send us a message at, um, at demuth underscore fly fishing on Instagram. And, and Katie's gonna put the uh, the email on the chat right now. Um, so back to the bead chain eyes versus dumbbell eyes. Um, there are so many different sizes and manufacturers of dumbbell eyes. If you get your hair caught in your click sun, click glasses, it's a pain. Um, there's so many different sizes of dumbbell eyes um, and types. So the way you can get tungsten, you can get brass, you can get lead. Um, I typically with dumbbell eyes, we use brass. Um, they're not much more expensive. And that's just me trying to be somewhat good for the environment versus the lead dumbbell eyes. You don't need to spend the money on tungsten dumbbell eyes because... Just my dumb opinion, but um, do we have a bag of coffee to give away? We don't. Okay. This is the only bag that uh, I'm saving this one because this is our fly and this will be our little collection thing. But we do need to order some from Angler's Coffee. Maybe we can talk to them, see okay. if we can order an extra bag or two, and it just ship directly from them. Um, but bead chain eyes are typically lighter. I think I saw someone say they're half the weight. Well, that's probably true, but it depends on what dumbbell eye you're you're comparing it to um 
The bead chain eyes are lighter. I would say bead chain eyes is just about heavy enough to invert the hook. So the hook point rise up, but it's not going to add a whole lot of, of weight depending on the fly. This really won't give it a big jigging motion like a clouser, or like something Tip would have with the, the lead eyes or the brass eyes or regular dumbbell eyes. Um, so Josh using the brass eyes as well. Bag of tungsten and dumbbell. No, we're not giving. I don't even have a. I don't even have a small bag of tungsten dumbbell eyes. Dumbbell eyes. Um, I couldn't. Uh, yeah, I don't have any of those. I did start doing the brass, but um, yeah. So that was my my spiel on dumbbell eyes. So let's grab a feather off of this. Um, this is a small. Are you not a, done yet? No. Okay. Well, almost, let's have scoot them along. Almost done. Oh, Colleagues, you scooped me. Lead free wraps. Yep, you can do that. Um, thank you, Al, for uh, emailing them. Appreciate it. Um, so, because it is a smaller flat, both of them are smaller. I'm not grabbing one from here. If you don't have this, just grab a regular uh, cape, your wider, regular dry fly cape, and you can grab them from down here. These are usually with your dry fly hackle you're not using the feathers that are that are down here for much but these make great woolly bugger hackles make really good well hello missy you all see oh come here she doesn't need, she doesn't like to jump on me she likes some hackle though oh what what is that she likes it pick out one um yeah so don't think because you don't have this exact cape that you can't tie it because you show enough can. So you see where I'm pulling this off? It's about maybe a third from the bottom. Somewhere like that. You show enough can? I just learned dubbing half a dubbing loop today. Twisting that and using that to add more sectional body. Yep. Where did you learn that from, Justin? Is that, did you learn from here? Did you learn somewhere else? That's a, it's definitely a fun way to, uh, to give a cool um, a cool look to the fly. So just like before, let's just pull all these hackles down. Let's make sure you can see that real good. And Katie, if you want to get her on TV, you're more than welcome to. Oh, she's um, sweet. She is a sweet dog. So you can see how they're like, we've got the longer parts here and then it kind of, then it gets shorter. So I'm, where it starts getting shorter is where I want to pull off. And you can pull off or just cut it off and just see kind of how we did. And that, that looks good. See that right there? Is that, come on, focus. There we go. So see how that, I've still got that little bit of webbing there. That looks fine. But because of the way we're going to tie this in, I don't need much. So that's, that's all we, oh, that's all, huh, that's all we need right there. Okay. And because that's right there, we pull it off. Okay. Some gourmet stuff. Wolf show enough. Where'd you find it, man? Grocery store. Watch from Ray Ball. All right. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to cross it over. So that's just one wrap, tying it in. <laughs> man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I love her. She said that she bought some Costco coffee and it was so terrible that she took it back. Oh, that's like something we would do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sorry, but we had this and it was awful. You can have it back. We want a refund. That's a PG version of what you would say. I know, but like that is like, exactly sure. something that we would do. I don't um, care where it's from. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So all I did, th this is, I don't know why it took me so long to learn, learn this, but when you're tying this in, you don't need a whole lot of hackle stem. And I probably should do this without all this fur on there so you can see it better. But I'm just going to... Jam right there behind the the bead chain eyes. I'm gonna put one wrap. So that's all. That's all it's holding in right now is one wrap. I'm gonna keep it. I'm kind of hold it. Keep it from twisting. You can see the stem. See the stem right there, right here. See the stem. I'm gonna take my thread. I'm gonna go in front of the stem, like this. And see how the stem's moving just a little bit. It's moving the whole feather up. Now I'm gonna grab my thread and go behind. The feather itself. So all I did, and still it's behind that bead chain eye. So all I did, if you, if it will be really hard to see, but there's an X right there holding that feather in. Okay. Got an X. So I'm going to take it, 
And if you need to loosen up and twist the feathers so it's going the way you want, making adjustments right now, you can. So it's going perfect. Let's pull everything back. Do one, two. I'll pull tight. Now we'll now if you pull too tight, this nano silk will cut into the your material. Let's do one more behind it. Yeah, that's okay. Now see that see the stem sticking right there? That's fine, but it kind of annoys me. So I'm gonna cut that out. And now we're we're good. We've got that tied in, and I'm gonna use my rotary function again because this makes it so darn easy. I'm parsimonious. But coffee is different. We have one paying, but I want, yeah, he's, yeah. There's a lot of blood. I had to hit proper. Chick days. Well, guys, let's do, let's have a coffee night. Ooh, chick days. I will show you the best. If you, since there's a bunch of coffee guys in here, I did find a phenomenal coffee maker. If you will send um, Angler's Coffee enough notes, if they send us a note, we'll do a coffee night and talk coffee as well as tie flies. Um, so, there's no half itch in here. Remember, this is the way I do it. No need to put a half itch. I can sit and spin this way, spin this way. The only thing I have to worry about is if I've got a long piece of wire or something hanging over here, it can cut something getting tied up. But I can spin whichever way I want to, no problem. I'm going to grab my feather, put one. That's one wrap. I'm going to go two wrap. And now I'm going to just do a slight back on my can't can't never could and see i've got my now my wires my pencil's getting wrapped up that's no bueno here we go okay let me see al hold on, hang on what's al saying yeah we had did we have an angler's coffee link where you could like click on it to get some um i don't think we did I don't think so. Misha sounds like she's something there. You got some Misha. Misha. Let me get to that. All right. So we got this this right here. Got my my tinsel going underneath. Now over. I do want to, I got ahead of myself. I do like to kind of brush it just a little bit to, to separate any fibers. That does kind of cut down on trapping fibers a little bit. There we go. That one didn't turn out quite as good. Okay. Cut that out. Cut this out. I'm going to brush this real good and bring it to life a little bit. And this is one thing with, unless you're trying to do a fancy dancy fly that looks pretty under Katie's camera and that's it, you don't need to be worried about taking a brush to it. Because if it falls apart, something happens, you're doing this, then redo it. And I mean, that's, our flies are pretty, but if they won't hold up to a little bit of brushing, then it's not the, not the point. All right, so we'll take a take our marker, mark that up a little bit. We're doing a little pre-mark here, pre-marking action. This is uh, Randy. This is six aught Semperfly Nano Silk. Um, he's in two X something as well. Kevin, what are you talking about? Um, Randy uh, Barry uses a Dynema in his thing. And I've never used Dyneema, but I kind of assumed that it was similar to this Nano Silk, which is why I switched over to Nano Silk for this show specifically. And that's why I've been talking a lot about Nano Silk. I, we used to use it all the time. I mean, it's just really nice for super smooth bodies. Um, I feel like you've got to be a little bit... You have to be a little bit more careful when you're using standard thread because the nano silk is just you don't have to worry about it breaking. But like I said, when you're tying a lot of things in, um, 
see I'm just kind of covering everything up, getting it nice and whatever. And I, I've got black and white nano silk. I, now I can make any color nano silk I want, but those are well, up until just recently. Those are the only colors I've got. Uh, instead of wire rib, Randy, instead of wire rib, hmm. in place of wire tinsel, you could, you could definitely use a nano silk in place of the rib and tinsel for sure. I think the, um, the problem is, um, not the problem, but the tinsel actually does when it's wet, give a little bit of, um, a little bit of segmentation, give a little, makes a little sparkle, I guess, but that might not be what you're asking. Rivers off color, so either cool. See, I'm telling you, all those little comments are what gets me excited. They have a like on Angler's Coffee. They have a roaster's choice, so you can get like a little um, variety set, a variety pack. Well, cool. I, know, I, I wasn't gonna sign up for their like subscription thing because I don't. I usually drink coffee at work. And but on the weekends I drink coffee. I don't want to grind it and make it all fancy and everything. Oh wait, wait, no, never mind. They select a. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. They select a flavor for you. Okay, got it. Carrie Dwayne did like four or five whip finishes on this, so that is not going to be coming apart anytime soon. We'll put our switch back over so you can see this wonderful goodness coming out here. Oh yes. Oh, everyone, just get. Oh, see that stuff. Man, if no one's watching this right now and they're just listening to the audio of this show, they're like, what are you watching in there? Oh, yeah. Watching this Sally Hansen's roll. Man, that's good. But I do want to show you the one we just tied. So you can see how it's kind of I mean, definitely shiny, but it kind of like if that was resin, we'd blast it and be done. But instead, Misha, honey, what you doing? Put it she in her loves, Yeti here. She loves you. Where is she? She's right here at my feet, getting into something. Misha. So let's switch it back over. This is the one we did first. Okay, so you can see how it's pretty well um, sunk in. Misha, what you eating? Does she have something in her mouth? What did she get? No, don't. It's a pleasure. Good girl. So I'm going to put this little coat on here. Like that. And see how it looks on top, and you can see the, the lights coming, and we can't see the thread wraps quite as much. But you can see the thread, thread wraps. So I'm just gonna put a little dab on there. A little dab will do. And that'll soak in, and that one's done. That'll traded fish. Um, so there you go. So that was both of them. I personally like the second one just a touch better, but for sure, fishing flies. So um, who was the winner, Ben? Ben, if you're still watching, I don't think I've seen you say anything else on here, but if you're still watching, we look forward to getting your email. Congratulations from winning. That is awesome. Yeah, his name is Ben Klotzer. Ben Klotzer. Um, hopefully you are still watching and you can see us uh, and you can send us a note. Um, how small would you go this fly? Kevin, I'm going strictly by Barry's... Um, recommendation he he says size six and eight and that's what i tied this is a size six right here the no, i'm sorry this is the size eight so this is as small as how we go and you look that's i mean it's not it's what i'll tell you exactly the whole thing is a little over an inch so inch and a half so it's a small smallish fly uh, I mean, it's supposed to be a, a shrimp bait fish, something small, something small. It's not exactly supposed to imitate anything. It's more of a suggestive pattern. So the movement and the, the the material is what's supposed to give it its whiz. Beautiful M A T mate. Beautiful. Or did you say mate? Is that a cool way to say mate? Good tell us a little more. Thank you so much, Justin. I appreciate it. Uh, that means a lot. Um, Bull X, we look forward to seeing your all's uh, uh, interpretation of this fly. We'd love it if you tag, tagged uh, Barry or Clark. You can um, see much, a few different variations. It's not a super popular fly, um, but there are a few YouTube videos. Obviously, Barry or Clark's YouTube video is, um, Katie, I'll switch it over to something. 
else. No. No. <laughs> uh, thanks, Bill. I haven't seen you saying much on here. I need your 1099. Um, Jeff, thanks for hopping on. Um, but uh, there are a few variations, so check it out. There's also the Polar Magnus, which has uh, got a little flash to it. But uh, we will see everyone next Wednesday night. We'll probably go back to our trout bugs next Wednesday night and then go back to Norway and then might even do some English flies. Um, but we really appreciate everyone hopping on each Wednesday night. We love seeing your old pictures. We love seeing your feedback. Um, if you haven't, we'd really love it if you became a member, either supporter or a promoter. Um, if you, I think most of you all subscribe, but if not, subscribe to our channel and um, thanks to all the promoters and supporters. We'll see you next Wednesday night and I'll turn it over to Katie to say goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Good dog. Good, Good dog. dog. See you guys. <laughs>